thing. I wasn't, you know, like back in the village, I was all this time I was working in a conflict situation and I didn't have any knowledge, no skills, no nothing, but I had the wisdom. And I was also there to help women and girls in the tribal conflict areas. So when I first came into the regional meeting, I felt that, man, I'm into a space where, you know, like I have these women folks coming around together and they are part of me. And we are kind of trying to work together and build a network. And being in that space, I was feel more empowered. But it was my first time to be in that regional uh, training and I really tried my best to pay attention. I was trying to really concentrate on what I could learn to take back to my organization to implement the kind of work that I was doing. So that time I, I, I could still remember. And it was my first time to be in that space. I never, you know, like had a chance of talking in, in the international uh, space. So I could just feel that, you know, like Shamima was trying to encourage us to talk and, you know, be part of the conversations and we can raise a lot of uh, our concerns and the struggles and all the things that we've been going through. And they said, when they said that it was really confidential to say all your uh, challenges in this, meet, uh, in this meeting, the regional meeting, I felt, okay, this is the time that I will have to share my stories and I will really, you know, be part of this conversation so I can really uh, tell them and then they can listen to me and they can see what they can do for me. So that's the time when I came and I was receiving some, receiving some of the counseling training as part of the package. And I was also, you know, discussing my challenges to them, how we really struggle in the trouble fight and how we are trying to you know, really defend ourselves with our women and girls back in the community where it's all men dominated area and I was just thinking, oh, I'm learning something, so how do I really go back and do something, you know, like we started some of our work already when she helped us with the program and the birth of Cuba Women for Peace in the human rights perspective. It came about because of the Fiji Women's Crisis Center. They gave us a 6,000 Fiji dollars, and this is when we went and initially started the human rights, and we celebrated in the community, and we brought all the uh, the all the chiefs and the leaders and the world, uh, tribal warlords, everyone together into one space. And that's the time when we first celebrated the Human Rights Day back in the community. So when I came here and I went back, I was more empowered because that's the time when I went back with all these things and I was able to, you know, like utilize my skills that I have been, you know, receiving about uh, celebrating the Human Rights Day. And that was the first time that we opened in our own communities. And, uh, and to now, and coming back here, uh, it took us almost how uh, many years? Um, it's almost 20 years now that we've been working in this field in 20 years plus. We'll be celebrating our 25th anniversary next year for the Kubi Women for Peace that we've been working with. And, and uh, now that we are, you know, putting another office into this regional space and we worked around having all the networks together and trying to set up the movement, I feel that it was a real success for, for the regional training that uh, we got here and went back and now that we have some of the successes, the policy changes been uh, achieved and then we achieved some of the tribal conflicts that men used to come and form alliance and fight, they are no longer fighting. And, uh, you know, like a lot have been happening after these years where I came and got the first training and went back and now I'm back into this uh, 44th uh, regional training.